The PCC Cup Series heads east to the Ural Mountains for this next round, the round of Central Russia, and it was originally going to be held at the Volga Ring track, but after a qualifier in which only 14 cars finished, which allowed some, well, unexpected uh, slower cars to make the show, the circus traveled to the Ural Ring, which is near the city of Yekaterinburg in Russia, near the Ural Mountains, and this is a very unique course. It is uh, very fast, and uh, it winds through some of the mountains in the area, so it's going to be an interesting race to see here today. On the pole for this race is Louis Ballard, who continues his domination on the road courses this season as Manticore Engineering has taken three of the top four positions in qualifying as Louis Ballard brings the field to the green flag. He pulls in front of Clara Kindall on the outside, and he, uh, I think he might let, oh no, never mind, Nicholas Cordova has fallen back as he is trying to fend off Clara Ossier, and now Louis Ballard holds off Clara Kindall, taking the inside through this hairpin here around that big rock, one of the features of this course. It cuts through a bunch of the mountains here in the Ural Mountains. It is a very scenic course, one that I do like so indeed. And here is AJ Murphy, and he goes for a spin in the back there. He's acquired some local sponsorship as well as Flint Stoneman there in the 87. These two cars I did not expect to see in the main race, but they managed to acquire some local backing, and uh, I guess that provided enough speed for them to make the show as now it looks like Flint Stoneman's dropping way back as uh, I think Chris Benson had some trouble there as well. Now we rejoin Louis Ballard in the lead at, as at this point it appears to be Manticore domination at the front of the field as they have the top three positions. Ballard, Kindall, and Aussier round out your top three as well as Corradovos and Gaspar de Souza in the top five as now Louis Ballard comes around this final turn, a very large final turn, very highly banked and he will lead lap number one. This is Nomar Suratelli running in the number 20 car. This is the first time that car has qualified all season. Round of applause to him for getting this uh, very uh, uh, very underfunded team into the show. He brought aboard some local sponsorship, and he is uh, doing a decent job in this car. He's running in 34th place at the moment, running in front of a couple cars that uh, I think should be a bit higher at the moment. Uh, a couple cars back there, including Preston Bell, and Kelly Blackwater, although they've been struggling all season uh, to find pace here on the road courses, but local Georgian driver, he's doing a good job. And here is his teammate, Pyotr Lyovkin, and he is running a bit better. He's in 27th place. He made a start at Vnukovo Airport, but fell out very early. Uh, he drove the 43 car, which is currently occupied by uh, Bela Kuznetsova, as we get a good shot there of the car, as uh, he's currently holding off Barry Juvenal for that position. And here on lap three. Ramsey Cockner blows up in front of the field. And oh, there's Jacob Eichholz, and he goes into the wall, and he goes over. He gets hit there by Pete Maverick. And Kirill Bujan makes a move to, do uh, to dodge, and he slams into the pit wall. A huge incident here on lap three as Ramsey Cockner goes over. We're going to go on board Pete Maverick here and see how Jacob Eichholz just runs into the back. He had nowhere to go, and there is... Ramsey Cockner as he slides down the track. Kirill Bujan goes flying by on the inside. I think he was attempting to commit to pit road, but he didn't want a violation. We're going to watch as this camera is focusing here on Bujan as he makes a move down there to the bottom, and he slams into the pit wall at a very high rate of speed. Uh, no word on his medical condition at the moment. And now we've got another car breaking down. Brian Gallagher breaks down on lap four. He pulls that car to the inside of the track, and he will get a tow back to the pits. Tough break for him. He was having a pretty strong run. He was running up in the top 20 at this point. Pulls the car right there, and he'll stop. And here is Bela Kuznetsova, who I mentioned. Uh, Pyotr Lyovkin was in this car last race, but Kuznetsova has been given a break. She actually uh, DNQ'd her number 26, Kosovyet, for this race, but... This team was looking for some local support, so they picked up one of the drivers uh, who would uh, draw a crowd, definitely. So, Bela Kuznetsova doing a good job in this car. She's currently running in the top 15 at the moment, so uh, I guess a bit of local support can take you a long way here in the PCC Cup Series. Claire Ausier, your runaway championship leader by this point, is currently running third behind Clara Kendall, and she appears to be the weakest Manticore car in the field at this point, as she's been unable to make a move on Kindall or Ballard without the help of uh, lap traffic. 
and uh, she, I think she's aiming for consistency at this point as I think she just wants to keep that car in one piece and on the road. As Daniel Lechleiter is reporting some suspension problems as that car is crab walking on the apron as he pulls that car into the pits. And I believe they're going to take that car straight to the garage as the problem appears terminal here on uh, lap number six. He's slow from 31st place. Here is one of the local drivers, Alina Lazareva, and she managed to get her car through the qualifier in the top five. So uh, good job for this Toyati team. They don't really have too much backing. And it's good to see a bunch of local drivers in this race as she has this car in 16th place, Dan Foray right behind her, and we've got a couple local drivers behind uh, Dan Foray. It appears to be Dmitry Ivanov and Yevgeny Kuznetsov, and they've been going at it for the uh, 18th position back there. So it's good to see a lot of these local drivers up here mixing it up in the top 20 as now Flint Stoneman is going a lap down here on lap number eight. Huh, I think there might be something wrong with this car as he holds it on the inside line and lets Clara Kindle go. And there's Clara Ossie just blasting right by as that car is, um, to, to put it lightly, horrendously off the pace. Uh, they have Siska Mosca on the car this week, and Polyus Gold, a couple other local sponsorships, and he's not doing them any good. He puts that car into the wall. Uh, that car, I, I'm, re they're reporting that, or he's reporting that it is a handful to drive, as he lets the rest of the top ten go by there. I'm surprised he hasn't pulled that thing into the pits if he's having such fr uh, trouble driving it. Here's Dmitry Ivanov, and he's running in 18th place. Him and Yevgeny Kuznetsov have been going at it all week. Uh, they have a rivalry that stems back to their early rally days, going back to the uh, early to mid-2000s. And uh, it's carried over this race as they were beaten and banging against each other in practice and uh, really trying to outbreak each other into the turns. Here's Ryan Jeffries in the 31, and he is taking over this car for a couple races for the injured Cody Deke as he slammed into the pit wall at Vnukovo Airport. Uh, our best wishes to his recovery. I believe he will be back in time for the American Tour at the very latest as he gets held up by Flint Stoneman and he's currently running in the 21st position. Well, not anymore, but he was at the beginning of this shot as now he uh, desperately tries to work his way around the ailing car of uh, Flint Stoneman but Ryan Jeffrey is putting together a pretty solid run here today. Here is Yevgeny Kuznetsov. Uh, we talked about him at Vnukovo Airport, and we wanted to see him back, and it looks like this team gave him another shot as he brought his Kosovyet here, and he's giving it a fine run. He's currently running in 19th place, but just as at Vnukovo Airport, he's been fairly anonymous all weekend here. And uh, here is Scott Wallen. We haven't seen him since... I believe we haven't seen him in a race since Chicago. He is currently running in 26th place, and he's been uh, kind of underperforming in this car. I believe that the team would have liked to see Edward Carroll come back, but he is currently participating in uh, British touring cars at the moment. So uh, I guess they're going to have to sell with Scott Wallen in this car, although he is giving them a decent run, as I mentioned before, in 26th place. Here is Louis Ballard on lap 13 and he's getting ready to put Flint Stoneman another lap down so that's two laps down by lap 13 and now he's getting ready to put Ben Worthington down. Ben Worthington has been kind of a moving chicane uh, all the all through this European tour but he moves over and lets him by fairly easily. Oh wow! Louis Ballard drives through the grass there as uh, I don't think he was anticipating having to work that hard to pass Worthington hear that or the tires are losing their grip a lot faster than we expected here but Louis Ballard pulls out to a huge lead as it appears that Klindahl and Ausia are both having trouble getting by Worthington as he has been as I mentioned before a moving chicane through all of the European tour as Ballard opens up a big big lead over the other two Manticore cars. As we go back and look at Ausier, she makes a move on the inside and she'll get by Kindle, who is still held up by Worthington there. As she finally gets by, I believe she uh, shook her fist at him or something of that manner. Uh, definitely displeased with how Worthington has been driving as of late. Problems for the number 29 of Joe Craig as he hits that dip 
in the road and his suspension appears to have bottomed out on him. And uh, I think that broke something on that car. Uh, I, I, I definitely think something broke on that number 29 as his car is very slow on the inside. Next lap, G uh, Gaspar D'Souza from P5 suffers an issue and he pulls that car off to the side of the road. Tough break for him. He was having a very strong run and that's both Raptor racing cars out of contention within a lap of each other. So a uh, really tough break for that team. They are really hoping for a strong run here today in the Ural Ring. And Chester Benson was running in uh, about 30th place when his engine grenades on lap 16. He was looking for a very strong run as he is currently outside the top 30. Alina Lazareva is running very strong here. Uh, Dmitry Ivanov as well, as well as Yevgeny Kuznetsov. But it appears that Ivanov is having troubles now with that dip as, is a, as it appears that a piece has broken in his suspension. So he's going to slow down and pull that car into the pits. As here is Ian Elias, and he is having a good strong run here in 12th place. And oh, it appears something's wrong with his car now here on lap 17 as he pulls that car uh, to the side of the road. Bella Kuznetsova goes by as well as Stringfellow Vincent there. But Ian Elias, tough break for him. He was having a very strong run as well, looking to gain some points on Claire Aussier as here is uh, Craig Jaisner as he pulls that car into the pits. His tire went down right before the pit lane. He caught it just in time and his car is going to pull into the pits and Alina Lazareva also was reporting suspension issues and brought her car to the garage. Here is Clara Kindall diving into pit lane and uh, this these are scheduled green flag pit stops right now and I believe that she might get the lead from this because uh, leaders are staying out in older tires, so they're going to be a bit slower, and I think that that will give the advantage to Clara Kendall when she comes out of the pit lane. Here is Louis Ballard trying to work his way around A.J. Murphy in the number 37. He's finally caught him after his early spin. Uh, Murphy's been doing an excellent job in that number 37 car, trying to keep it on the road and in contention for a good finish here. A uh, good finish for that team as it appears that Louis Ballard is going to pit this lap. Uh, yes, he does. He is definitely signaling to his crew. He comes in to pit. Uh, Claire Aussier stays out an extra lap as uh, Nicholas Corridovos comes in as well in the number 37 there. Greg Maddox in as well from fifth place as we go on board. Clara Kindle as she goes by Louis Ballard. So when uh, Claire, oh, oh, she drives the turn wide there, but she comes back on track. But Clara Kindle is currently ahead of our uh, leader, or our former leader, Louis Ballard. So I believe that Clara Kindle's gamble will pay off. As here, Claire Aussier comes into the pits. Uh, the only car to come in among the leaders this lap. And she brings her car into the pits, and uh, she's going to lead two laps because of this as uh, she stayed out. She leads lap, uh, her second lap there. But here is Clara Kindall coming by, uh, coming by the pits. We still haven't seen Clara Aussier come out. There she is. There is Clara Aussier. And it will appear that Clara Kindall will take the lead. So a surprise change of events here as pit strategy gets Clara Kindall the lead. No team orders over at Manticore Engineering as all three of those cars are battling each other for the position. They will not lay over for each other I don't think. Here's Flint Stone, he's had all kinds of problems today. He gets shoved off the track by Chris Benson, comes across the track and nearly runs into Clara Kindle there. That would have been an absolute disaster for the leader as Clara Kindle has been uh, crashed more times than I can count this season. And it's about time she got a good run as Flint Stoneman lays over for OCA. Ballard and Cordovos as the leaders go by. Here's Preston Bell uh, about to go a lap down and his car swerves wildly to the left right in front of his teammate and the leader. It appears that he has suffered a suspension failure from the dip in the track, as with everyone else who's uh, had some problems, as he tries to let people by, uh, but it's definitely hard to hang on to that car. He tries to hold it on the outside, getting ready to cross over, and there's John Bracci as they rub fenders, and I believe that Preston Bell will make it back safe to the pits. Here's Louis Ballard, he managed to get around OCA and Cordovos, and he is back into the second position as you see that Kindle has opened up a big gap on the field as she has just lapped Kelly Blackwater right in front of this group. 
but Ballard is currently trying to run down Kindall for the top position as he goes into this wide sweeper here into the front straightaway. I believe that Kindall will have the uh, longer run advantage though. Here's Chris Winter and he's currently battling with Michael Grant for the 10th position. This has been a good battle that's been going on all race. They've been running uh, nose and tail for the duration of this race as well as Ike Durbin who's right in front of them running in ninth place. These uh, guys haven't been exactly the fastest on the road courses but Michael Grant was the surprise winner at Vnukovo Airport. Uh, I don't think anybody really saw that coming. So maybe one of these drivers will be in contention later on. Ike Durbin is holding very strong. He's been traditionally very strong at these road courses. Michael Grant, he won at Vnukovo Airport. And uh, Chris Winter has a couple top fives uh, throughout this European tour. So I'd expect these drivers to be very strong as this race goes on, maybe into the later portions of the race here. And here is another driver who's been very strong, but uh, away from the cameras. Here is Stringfellow Vincent. He's currently running in the 12th position right now. There's nobody around him. He's uh, just kind of in his own little zip code at this point. Just trying to putz around and uh, collect a good finish if he can stay out of trouble. And it appears that he will do so, as I don't think there's any cars within 10 seconds of him at this point. He's been uh, doing a really good job here today, and uh, we haven't really talked about him much at all. Here's John Bracci, and he is currently running in the sixth position. He leads the Australian Motorsports Brigade as he just put Kelly Blackwater a lap down. But Bracci has been traditionally the strongest of the cars, and I believe we just saw a puff of smoke there as he uh, does a bit of rally cross there. Uh, maybe if uh, this career doesn't work out for him, he can pursue a career in the uh, WSCC or something, uh, we're going to investigate what caused that cloud of smoke. And it was uh, Lenny Jacobs going up in smoke from a tw from 22nd position. A uh, tough break for him. He was having a good run here today, uh, something that he hasn't had too many of. But it appears that this car has uh, broken down on him more times than we can count this season. So uh, tough break for him. He parks the car right there, and he's going to hop out and go over that wall. Here's Dan Ferre, and he's having a good run too. He's running up in the 15th position, running right behind uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov, who managed to get around him in that last round of pit stops. But Dan Ferre doing a good job giving the Lycoya here a good run here on lap 28. And he's trying to run down Yevgeny Kuznetsov, who has rejoined his rivalry with Dmitry Ivanov, as Ivanov came out of the pits right in front of him. They were able to fix up that suspension problem that he had. And uh, they've been going at, trying to outbreak each other, running side by side, lap after lap. Joe Craig's miserable day finally comes to an end. He's a couple laps down at this point. And it appears that the fuel intake system has busted on that number 29 car. And he's going to pull that car uh, off to the side of the road. They're going to get a tow back to the pits. And his day is going to be done. Here is Yevgeny Kuznetsov trying to make a diving move on... Uh, oh, no, never mind. Huge crash. In turn number one, Yevgeny Kuznetsov goes over and he goes flying. Craig Jaisner ran into him there and he is going to roll on his roof down the track. A horrendous incident for the 23 car here. We're going to show it to you in slow motion. They managed to get that uh, fuel intake system repaired on the 29 car. But Kuznetsov tries to outbreak Ivanov head into the turn. And Kuznetsov is missing his right front fender. His car is heavily damaged he slams into the guardrail at about a hundred miles per hour that car is toast anyway at this point there's Dan Ferre who had such a good run going for him but Yevgeny Kuznetsov he slides across the track here and Craig Jaisner is going to come into the shot here and just deliver an absolutely horrendous blow to the driver's side door and that's going to send the 23 car flying down the track and that car is absolutely destroyed at this point. Uh, Craig Yonser just delivered an absolutely massive blow to the driver's side door and uh, we hope that Yevgeny Kuznetsov will be okay. He has not gotten out of his car yet and uh, a full course yellow was thrown for this incident so they could clean it up and debris is just strewn all over the track but 
our, our thoughts and prayers are for Yevgeny Kuznetsov. And here is Pyotr Lyovkin as he gets involved attempting to avoid Kuznetsov as his car goes sliding across the track. And he runs into Joe Craig. So that takes another car who was having a very strong run. He was running in the top 15 at that time. Takes him out of the race as well. Here is the battle for 8th place between Cameron Taylor, Lewis Jones, uh, Chris Winter, Michael Grant, and Ike Durbin. As it appears that uh, Cameron Taylor has kind of pulled away uh, because of some of the lap traffic that's been uh, plaguing some of the leaders. But Lewis Jones is giving this car a very strong run. Uh, something that we... Uh, we're kind of expecting of him, but we weren't expecting this car to be this far up in the field. But Lewis Jones is giving this car a very good run, and he is currently catching Cameron Taylor for that eighth position. Uh, Lewis Jones, once again, giving this car a very good run. This is the third Australian motorsports car, the number 58. And here is Clara Kindall as she pulls into the pits on lap number 31 of 43, bringing Louis Ballard and Nicholas Corridovos with, uh, with her. I believe she's trying to mix up her, or they're trying to mix up their pit strategy a little bit, trying to match hers so they don't lose as much time. As you saw, Claire Aussier did not pit, but she brings her car into the pits the next lap here on lap 32. She's going to lead two more laps because of this and uh, get a bonus point out of that. But Clara Kindall now coming by. She currently has the lead by a bit. As you see, Louis Ballard lost quite a bit of time as now Nicholas Corridovos is in. Uh, looks to inherit second place now. Claire, Au uh, Claire Aussier is still in the pits as Clara Kindall comes down the front straightaway. We're looking for uh, Claire Aussier and she comes out of the pits there. And Clara Kindall will still hold on to lead as she almost runs into Scott Wallen there. Uh, Claire Aussier is currently uh, going to fall back to, I believe, third position at this point as Nicholas Cordovos appears to be the only car that can break up the Manicor domination here today as he runs in second place uh, over over Louis Ballard and Claire Aussie as Aussie has fallen back to fourth place now. Uh, Louis Ballard managed to get by her as she was coming out of the pits, but Nicholas Corridor was having a very strong run here today in this number 39 for Griffith Motorsports. Once again, the only car to break up the Manticor domination as here is Ryan Jeffries and he's having a strong run. Uh, running in 15th place on lap 34. We haven't really talked about him much today, uh, but he's having a good strong run. Uh, kind of been anonymous all race. And here is uh, Barton Sandy, who's having another strong run. He just went a lap down, but he is currently running in the top 20 uh, in this Holden Commodore, and he is doing a good job uh, trying to stay out of the way of the leaders and get around uh, Flint Stoneman as well as they make it three wide. But Barton Sandy uh, definitely has a level head. He keeps that car off to the side of the track, and uh, he'll hold on to his position as here is a very good battle that's opened up for the sixth position as uh, it, it appears that Cameron Taylor and Lewis Jones and Chris Winter have caught John Bracci for the sixth position as Bracci tries to hold them off. They're running nose to tail at this point. They've been doing this for the past couple laps. But John Bracci appears to be the strongest car in this group as, oh, it looks like Cameron Taylor's gaining on him a little bit. And John Bracci is reporting that he is running low on fuel, that they did not fuel that car as much as they should have. Uh, they, I think they are anticipating, uh, I think their math was a bit off as John Bracci brings his car into the pits again. Uh, something not really right with that uh, Australian motorsports team as now Lewis Jones is reporting that he's running low on fuel. Chris Winter is reporting pro coolant problems in this number 56 car. He said that the temperature, uh, the water temperature in that car is going up steadily and that there is something wrong in, under the hood of that number 56 car. Regardless, he is going to keep that car on track as long as he can, trying to get a good finish out of this race. Uh, perseverance is the key for Chris Winter as now Lewis Jones has to come in as he was running low on fuel now. So uh, Australian Motorsports did not do their math here uh, for fuel mileage apparently. As here is Bella Kuznetsova. She's moved up into the 10th position but she has to come down to pit road as her car was uh, running a bit low on fuel. I don't think she's going to lose too many positions either, as there aren't too many cars left on the lead lap. But Bella Kuznetsova, a top 10 finish, appears to be vanishing before her eyes as Clara Kindall, unopposed, 
will come across the line and she will take her first ever PCC Cup Series victory at the Euro Ring near Yekaterinburg. And Chris Winter on the final lap, his car finally gave up. Overheating problems will take him out of the race, but he will cross the line in ninth position and pull that car straight into the garage after taking the checkered flag. Nicholas Corradovos finishes second as Louis Ballard and Claire Aussier finished third and fourth respectively. Manticore cars led every single lap of this race, proving that they were the dominant cars all weekend. Greg Maddox finishes fifth place. Ike Durbin, good run for him. He finishes in sixth place. Cameron Taylor finishes seventh. Michael Grant, eighth place. Despite falling out with overheating issues, Chris Winter finishes a very strong ninth. And Stringfellow Vincent, very quiet run all day but he will round out your top 10 here at the Euro Ring.